back to my channel. Catherine here. I'm so glad that you joined me today. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my results after being on Nutrisystem for two months. I have had an amazing amount of support and encouragement from my viewers, and I just want to say up front, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to answer any questions that you have about my journey, and I hope that I am able to help you in the process as well. I do want to mention though, Nutrisystem does not pay me to do these videos. I'm simply sharing my journey on this program and things that I wish that I had known about. It doesn't matter the vehicle you choose, it only matters that you're moving toward your destination. So with that said, I'm glad you're here today. Let's jump right in. Okay. Before I get to my results, let's talk about dun, 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 the scale. Okay, seriously, no. <laughs> if anyone knows how to avoid the scale, it's me. I didn't like looking at the cold, hard facts about how I had been treating my body, showing up in front of me, mocking me, only making me feel like a failure and further assuring myself that I had to stop eating for the rest of my life, starting tomorrow. <laughs> Stopped weighing myself eventually and started lying to myself about how numbers don't matter when in fact, they really do. They really matter when my blood pressure's through the roof and I'm struggling to bend over and tie my shoe. They matter for my health. Hear me out here, I'm not saying that the opposite side of the spectrum is the way to go either. And just like my prior dieting attempts, I tend to be extreme with weighing myself as well. I was either an I don't care, I'm gonna stick my head in the sand and hope that the lion doesn't bite me in the butt type person, or I was obsessed, looking at the numbers every day and obsessing over the amount of weight I've lost. If it was less than a pound a day, yeah, seriously, I just said a pound a day then I felt like a huge failure. And I would punish my body by skipping meals and lowering calories further than the already lowered calorie amount that I was consuming to begin with, just so that I could see the numbers decrease on the scale the next morning. It's been crazy, y'all, seriously. Like, I obsess about the weirdest stuff. Before starting Nutrisystem, I was the, I don't care. I don't care about the numbers. I'm not gonna look at them. I'm not gonna pay any attention to them. But secretly, I did care. I just wasn't willing to do anything about it. Once I jumped on the scale to see how bad I really did need to change some habits, I was shocked. I hadn't maintained the weight that I was maintaining anymore. Instead, I had gained a stupid amount of weight in the first two months of 2020. While most people were hitting the gyms and eating salads as part of their New Year's resolutions, I was eating more and moving less. It was crazy terrible. So I spent weeks researching diets that could get me thin by tomorrow, you know? But every diet I looked at, everything I researched, every miracle pill, every you know, low calorie diet that I knew to do before, nothing resonated with me. I already knew the ones that had worked for me in the past, but I just couldn't seem to bring myself to do those. But once I found Nutrisystem, it was like now or never, either I ordered the Nutrisystem or I was gonna just keep making excuses for why I couldn't find something that I felt like was going to help me to get a jump start on my weight loss. So I went ahead and ordered, and then the day came where I had to jump back on the dreaded scale. So I began the Nutrisystem diet the same way that I had with others in regards to numbers on the scale. I had a plan to lose so much weight, I was gonna be like a supermodel halfway through the month. Well, y'all know that didn't work. I started obsessing over the numbers on the scale each day, just like I had before. And the first week I lost 10 pounds, so I was good with the results. But the second week when progress slowed to a normal healthy weight loss, I about went crazy. I recognized something in me that I knew I had to get in check, my obsession with a number. So yes, numbers are important, but it can't be the only measurement for success. I had to remember that body measurements mattered so much more. If I didn't lose a pound in a week, I would check my measurements and sure enough, the numbers went down. Maybe not by that much, but they did decrease. So that meant I turned some fat into muscle and burned some inches. That's a win. So here's my advice for you dieters out there who fight the same battles. Go ahead and get your number goals set. Like mine was to lose 30 pounds and go from a size 14, 16 to a size 12. Then take your weight and your measurements and record them either in your Numi app or write them down in a journal and then stop weighing yourself every day. But instead, just stick to your healthy eating plan. Drink your water, get up and move at least 30 minutes every day and only weigh once a week. I started doing this and it's taken so much pressure off of me. Beating myself up for not losing a pound a day is about as healthy as eating a bowl of mint chocolate chip ice cream with chocolate syrup on it twice a day, every day. It's just not good. 
And I found that by the weigh-in day, I always lost the one to two pounds and my inches continued to decrease. So this has helped me to remember that it's not about just getting to my destination. And then once I arrive, I can go right back to my unhealthy eating and my unhealthy patterns that got me here to begin with. But instead, it's about what I learn and what I experience on my journey. So take a break, do yourself a favor, don't obsess over the scales. It's important to know where you're at so that you can gauge where you're going, but it, don't be obsessed over it and don't let it be used as a tool to beat yourself up and to make yourself feel like you're an incredible failure and you do it wrong or you didn't do it good enough. Just a little phrase that I remind myself of often, especially right before I get on the scales, anytime I get on the scale, I just remind myself it's not just about the pounds that I lose, it's pounds and inches. So I need to look at both of those to gauge how well I've been doing. And also, you know, if I'm doing the things that I know I'm supposed to be doing, I'm going to get to where I'm supposed to go. It may take me a little longer than I'm used to it taking, but I'm going to get there. So I just have to remember if I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing, like making sure that I'm following my diet plan, like I said before, eating the right amount of foods, eating every two to three hours, getting up and exercising 30 minutes a day, even just little exercise is better than no exercise, guys, for real. Like even if you have to do it in 10 minutes a day increments, if you can't find 30 minutes in an entire day to get up and move, no problem. Find 10 minutes at a time, get up and move. If you have to walk around your cubicle in your office, if you have to go up and down the stairs, if you have to get up and walk in your living room, it doesn't matter. There's so many ways to get up and move, but there's really no excuse why we shouldn't be doing it. It's very healthy for our bodies and it's very healthy for, especially people like me who have like a bad back, it's healthy for us to get up and move. I find that the longer I sit, the more my back hurts. So I really am reminded often to get up and move when my back starts aching. So it's not really a big problem for me, but if you have a hard time remembering to get up and move, maybe set an alarm on your phone or a reminder on your phone that will tell you like, hey, you need to get up and move. And I'm not talking about your little Fitbit thing that says get up and make 10 steps because it's not just the quantity, it's the quality that you need. So that means you need to get your heart rate up a little bit for 10 minutes or 15 minutes if that's all you can find and do that twice a day or at your 30 minutes. And hey, if you can do more than that and you feel like you're ready to do that, go for it. But you know, don't use the fact that you have a really low fitness level as an excuse to not get up and move because I... I'm right there in the same boat with you, low fitness level people. I'm learning and I'm getting stronger every day, but I'm not going into any kind of workout program like a pro and I'm, you know, I, I have to start somewhere. So I'm starting somewhere and every day that I do that, I get stronger and stronger and eventually I'll be able to jump into programs like P90X and other programs that, you know, you just hear about that are like really rigorous workout type routines, but there's something for everybody in the realm of moving your body. So find something that works for you that you enjoy or else you won't do it and drink your water. The numbers on the scale don't really matter as much if you know that what you're doing is good for your body. Eventually the scale will catch up with your results. Okay. Like they're going to meet in the middle and you're going to be fine. So that's all I have to say about the scale. I really felt like that was important for somebody to hear today because I struggle with it for sure. And since I decided to just start weighing once a week, I really have felt so much better about myself. And I don't feel like I have to get up every morning and run in there to see how well I did, like measuring my success as a person based on the number on the scale. I know that I'm doing the right things for my body. So eventually the numbers have to go down anyway, and they are. So let's talk about my numbers. So now for the reason why you're here today, my two month results. Yay! Okay, I'm so excited y'all. Your system claims that you're gonna lose 18 pounds and two inches in your first two months. And they're right on, but I exceeded that by a little. I'm currently down 22 pounds and 13 inches overall on my entire body. Huge, big win. I was thinking about it, my one-year-old weighs 29 pounds, so I've lost almost the equivalent of his weight and he's pretty heavy kid. My back hurts most of the time when I lug him around, so I thought, wow, I just gave my back a huge break by losing those 22 pounds in two months time. And so I'm really excited about those results. And you know what, guys, I didn't starve. Seriously, I didn't skip a meal. 
I didn't skip a smart carb or a power fuel. Although I did skip some snacks every other day or so for my nighttime snack, but that's healthy anyway. Nutrisystem is so convenient though. It's been great, but I know that I can't afford to buy it every month for the rest of my life, nor should I continue to eat processed prepared foods as much as I am. So I've been working on a plan to stay committed to my healthy from the inside out journey and not derail all my effort being caught off guard without a plan. So I'm really excited. I've joined an accountability group and just recently started Beachbody On Demand workouts that are tailored to my lower fitness level. So that's a plus. I really love dance workouts and there's plenty of those on that program. Plus it's only like $8 a month if you break it down. And that's way less expensive than a gym membership for just an individual, let alone a family, because I have a family and everybody in the family can use that membership. I don't have to worry about getting to classes at a certain time, germs and childcare and packing a gym bag and trying to, you know, schedule it and all that stuff. I just started this so that I could transition easily off of Nutrisystem and into my healthy for life, long-term lasting change. And I knew I couldn't do it on my own. I have tried that and it didn't work. So that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed watching and want to follow my next chapter of my healthy from the inside out journey, get tips for a healthier life, to be encouraged and want a support system of people who will cheer you on as well. Click that subscribe button today and share my channel with your girlfriends. And remember that beauty is more than what we see on the outside. It's the quiet inward knowing that who you are was created to be loved by the one who created you. And when you know that, you are full of beauty, so full of beauty on the inside that it overflows out of you, touching everything around you and making it beautiful. So go be beauty flow today. Have a great week. Bye.